Good morning, my dear friends, and welcome to my channel or welcome back. Really glad to see you. I am super waking up, so I apologize. I know my hair kind of looks craziness, and I have coffee here. I'm going to try to nurse it. Um, I feel a little bit pressed. <laughs> We're here at the end of the month, and I know that I have an empties, like what I burned in February, um, review that I need to put up, which will probably be a little tiny bit into March, maybe Sunday. Um, but the, the long standing candles that I really need to review because I have burned them predominantly through January and February are this huge, well, it wasn't really huge, but it took me a long time to get through them. This big Yankee candle haul that I did and it needs to happen. So I forced myself to get up fairly early today. And for me, anything earlier than 10 is like extreme. <laughs> I am not a morning person at all, as my friends like to say about certain hours, like nine o'clock or eight o'clock or seven o'clock or six o'clock. Those hours don't exist for Sarita. Um, I think I would probably sleep about 12 to 14 hours a day if I could. I just love to sleep. But here we are, and I'm here for you. Let's do Yankee Candle. I just have too much that I need to do today. It needs to happen right now. So let's do it. Um, so to review what it is that I bought. So I bought a few candles. I think it was very early January. Um, and we don't have a Yankee Candle here in Charlottesville. We have a Yankee Candle in Richmond. And my iPhone like randomly broke. We also don't have an iPhone, like an Apple here, it's an iPhone, an Apple here. So I had to spur of the moment, drive to Richmond to go to Apple so that they could fix my iPhone. And while I was there, I stopped at one of the malls and Yankee Candle was there and I smelled and I bought. So they had just come out with their desert line here for their, um, I, I'm not sure because I, I don't follow Yankee Candle as closely anymore, so I'm not sure if it was their spring summer line already. Are we going to have more things from Yankee Candle? I don't know. Um, but this was definitely, I, I received it as an early winter kind of collection. And it's a desert motif, and that worked for me. Um, it landed well for me because... And I've said this in a few videos now. I really like the dry. It's a little bit escapist um, in that it invokes something that is warm as opposed to the cool weather or the cold weather that many of us are all experiencing in January and February. But it doesn't go full board tropics in a way that like Yankee Candle, I mean that Bath and Body Works does. And so in that sense, I think it's really nice. If I was the candle company, I would do desert in January too. So I liked it. I loved the fact that it was a restrained collection. It was only four, Kringle, I'm looking at you. No, five candles because they did have an exclusive candle that I don't think they did online. They did just in stores. Spoiler alert, I do not have that candle. Um, yes, so um, it's the Canyon Pine one, which actually I'm a little bit interested in smelling now. At first I was not, but now that some early reviews are coming in, I'm like, oh, I wouldn't mind at least smelling it. So if I'm in Richmond at some point, I definitely will check that out. Um, there were, so five candles, I bought four of them. So, um, also to back up, I did not buy them all at that, that um, juncture in Richmond because actually in a very bad way, and this is another conversation that we need to have, it's another, it's, it's a mismarketing strategy from Yankee for sure. They dropped their candles, their new candles to Target of all places first and Meyer, like various different retailers like that but target was the biggest one and target had them and sold them at a very good rate i mean it was like 16.99 i don't think the price has gone up i mean it's like 1699 which is considerably less than they would have sold in store full price at yankee candle so they just dropped them all to target and they didn't end up getting them in their own stores and online at their own website until like 
I don't know, 20 days later, 25, like it was craziness. They allowed Target and these other like retailers to steal their thunder at a lower price point. Like, I just, I, I can't, I can't. Like that is like marketing incompetence to the point that like it offends me and it makes me upset. <laughs> Yankee Candle can't afford to be making those kinds of marketing blunders. At any rate, um, close parentheses, the clarification here is that I bought the big tumblers at Target initially. And then when I went to Richmond, I they had randomly the wax melts. And so I picked up, but they didn't have any of the other candles. I picked up wax melts in the other two at Richmond, and then they had a few clearance candles, and I picked those up as well. I apologize. I've got this like a little twisted. Let me just explain to you what it is that I have here. Uh, so I have a long-standing candle. These were on clearance because not only were they considered quote unquote seasonal a little bit that they were trying to surplus out, but these were their original three wicks that they developed and they are they're obsolete now they have first of the year gone to like bath and body work style three wicks which are shorter and deeper these were actually a little larger too i think these are 18 ounce. yes these were 18 ounces whereas the bath and body works ones are like 14 14.5 um I personally like these and they actually burned fine. I do think that the diameter was a little bit on the large side, but what I appreciated is that they were trying to develop something that was unique. It wasn't just duping Bath and Body Works. I appreciate that. Um, obviously the labels are a different matter. <laughs> um, I would say that the marketing, the, the branding and the packaging is a disaster from what I'm seeing at Yankee Candle, but that is a very personal opinion. And there's a lot of people who would disagree with me and really like the aesthetic. So I wanna kind of tread carefully on that. At any rate, um, this one is white spruce and grapefruit. As you can tell, it was quite a bit sooty, um, but caveat here, I hate burned this candle. Do you guys hate burn candles? <laughs> I do. I hate burn candles. When I come to a point where I'm like, eh, I don't like you. I don't think you're good or like whatever else. And I'm just trying to get through it now for like review purposes. But even before I had a channel, like I had this weird, like if you buy it, you must burn it kind of philosophy. <laughs> so I'm just trying to get through it so that I can say that I burned it and quote unquote got my money's worth, which may not be the best philosophy to have because the whole point of buying candles is to enjoy, right? So I hate burned it. Hate burning means putting a candle in a room and lighting it up and being like, you're gonna burn now forever and ever. And I don't care. I don't care if it's four hours. I don't care if it's five hours. You'll see. This is how I feel about you. I don't care, right? I think I burn this one sometimes like 10 hours at a time. And so, yes, you're seeing some smut, some soot on the top, but friends, that was after like literally 12 hour burns, 12 hour burns. I would walk in and I'd be like, man, you're actually doing quite well. <laughs> and then I felt bad because I'm like, I know that I'm not treating you well, but actually you're standing up to it pretty well, you know? So yes, there was some sooting, but I destroyed this candle. The problem for me on this one is that it just had no strength and throw. And the fragrance itself was really just kind of adequate. So the notes, and this is a long-standing one. I think you can get this one. I think it's been in their collection for a bit. So, um, and it's a, it's, it's a really nice concept. It really is. It just didn't come across as brilliant. And then with the strength and throw, it was like, meh, this just is not special, whatever. So the notes on this one, top notes, grapefruit, pomelo, pine, and orange, which you would expect. Mid notes, spruce, black currant, pineapple, and fir needle. Base notes, rich balsam, vanilla bean, musk, and white cedar. So really, honestly, things that you would want to see in a candle like this, there are no huge surprises, with the exception maybe of pineapple, but really, it all makes sense. 
and it really smells quite nice and this is part of the reason why I picked it up you know it was ten dollars I like the smell of it I love grapefruit I love spruce it seemed like a perfect January candle and yeah there was a little bit of depth behind it but that depth nuance just completely dissipated once it was burned all I got was like kind of a nice vague grapefruit with a nice vague balsam but it was all coming in at about like a three or a four and it's just it's a no bueno for me so it it spent most of its life in the guest bathroom where it did not leave for any reason um <laughs> in terms of throw um and i hate burned it and it got all the way down and i have to say i was very impressed that i burned it for 12 hours and it stood up to it and did it the next day without any complaints so there's that however you want to take that the other clearance candle that i got was an evening river walk right here and i did like evening river walk and i would repurchase evening river walk um, provided that it was the right price. I liked it. I liked it. This one got sooty too. Um, probably less so because I didn't hate it, therefore did not hate burn it. <laughs> um, so the notes that, and this is relatively recent. This was in, this was new for their fall collection in 2023. So, um, evening river walk notes are top notes, Bergamot, cardamom, I'm sorry, I'm trying to read my writing. Bergamot, cardamom, red cedar, birch bark, mid notes, amber, suede, black vanilla, base notes, smoked oud, burnished leather, and mahogany wood. And frankly, all those things are right up my alley. What would make you pause, what made me pause a little bit is the cardamom note up at the top and all of those very deep and heavy masculine notes leading up to mahogany wood. Dun dun dun. <laughs> At the end. So the chances of this being a very heavy men's cologne is actually extremely high. And given that this came across actually quite well and fairly nuanced and brighter than you would expect. Don't get it twisted, it is a men's cologne. It for sure is, but I like it and I would definitely purchase it again. So I said, and I do reiterate after I've burned through it, that it sits, if you're familiar with the Bath and Body Works candles, especially that came out last year in the fall, it sits nicely in between, if you can imagine it, the um, cocoa roasted chestnuts and the spooky moonlit graveyard it sits somewhere right in there and when i made that discovery in richmond in january because i had smelled it before then and thought oh that's kind of interesting but then i hadn't experienced the bath and body works candles and so then when i went back in january and made that connection and was like and you know what this is it is blah 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 right then i I was even more interested in purchasing it because I really liked both of those candles from Bath and Body Works, especially the coconut, the cocoa roasted chestnuts. But even the the graveyard one really grew on me, um, and they're they're kind of a similar vibe. They have some, they have certain elements in their fragrance profile that are similar. They're both really deep and like sexy and like sultry and musky. Um, with some really earthy elements in the case of Moonlight Graveyard with the cocoa element that makes it like a shea butter. They're just, they're kind of similar in that respect. Creamy and deep and like just really intriguing. Yeah, um, masculine leaning, yeah. So um, this fits like right in the continuum between the two and has a lot of notes in common, comes across in a similar way. I do have to say that this one goes a bit more cologne than either of the other two do. And for that reason, I actually kind of prefer the Bath and Body Works candles because I think they were able to like invoke all of those amazing, intriguing, masculine leaning kind of vibes without resorting to kind of a cliched cologne carrier. Um, don't get me wrong, cologne and perfume candles are fine, but 
you can sometimes resort to them to conceal the fact that your fragrance notes are not popping quite the way that they should be or can't stand on their own. We'll make it a cologne. <laughs> we'll make it a perfume, right? And then the like, the, the amber or the bergamot just kind of like papers over some things that would not stand very well on their own. I don't know if that makes any sense. Um, like I said, it's not always the case. Please don't like approach a cologne candle and be like, well, this is tacky or this is subpar. It may not be, it may not be. In this case, I do think that, that the Bath and Body Works ones are superior in that they don't resort to that, which is unusual for Bath and Body Works, to be clear. Um, and so they present all of these notes with a little bit more brightness and clarity and authenticity and richness in a way that this gets a little bit muddled. It gets a little cologne muddled. Um, and if you're not a cologne person, I don't think this is your candle. We'll put it that way. But it's definitely not in the category of like what I call first gen <laughs> men's colognes a la um, Midsummer Night for Yankee and Mahogany Teakwood for Bath and Body Works. It's not a first gen men's cologne. Um, I think it's solidly in the second gen, which is still a men's cologne, but we're trying out some different vibes and some more less, less well-worn or over plowed notes. Yeah, I liked this one. Like I said, I would repurchase it. For me, I do not, I, I don't like the tumblers very much. Um, and as I've said for Kringle, I prefer a medium vessel. I just do, across the board. It took me days and days and weeks to get through these tumblers, weeks that I don't have personally. I was ready to be done with these candles well before that point. Um, and I have a ton of other candles to burn, so I just cannot devote that kind of time. I need a medium jar for sure. And to be honest, even if I adored a candle, I would almost rather have two mediums of it than one large. I just think, give me a fresh new candle, you know? Um, I don't want to burn, I don't want to store a, a half burned candle, number one. Number two, um, I, you know, when you start burning a candle that no matter how well it burns, Kringle, I'm even looking at you, no matter how well it burns, mm, you start burning through and deep into the candle, you run into, I don't know, scent variations, sooting, some wick issues, like whatever it is, give me a fresh new candle. So I'm definitely a medium girl all the way. And for, um, Yankee Candle, and I don't have one with me, so I apologize, but they've got kind of like a a modern tapered tumbler, you know, that was like, it, I think it's kind of an homage to like the Apothecary, but it's more modern looking. So they have those in mediums, and I really like that format. I would buy it in that if I um, encountered Riverwalk, and I would probably try it in their new Bath & Body Works 3 Wick as well, if it came down to it. Um, which I haven't tried and I would really like to try. Okay, so that's Evening River Walk, which I do recommend provided that your tastes lean in my direction, which is to say um, more masculine and you don't mind a men's cologne. I thought it was nice. And of the fall candles that I smelled from Yankee Candle last fall, it was the one that I, I thought was the best or at least the most intriguing. Okay, so let's turn now to the Pièce de Résistance, the, um, I don't know if it's the winter collection or the spring-summer collection. I suspect Yankee Candle will come out with something else um, in the summer before they come out with their fall, but I don't know for sure. Um, unlike Kringle, they have a much more restrained policy <laughs> and they rely upon a lot of returning favorites um, and backlog, which I think is an appropriate, and repackages, I, I think that's more of an appropriate strategy for the kind of company footprint than they are, and they're even closer to Bath & Body Works in terms of their corporate footprint than Kringle is, but I think, I think they're doing just about what they should be doing. Um, I would like to be seeing 
more of the deep catalog from Yankee Candle in their stores because I think that those fragrances are the best for a whole host of reasons and I, I don't think it's controversial to say that. The candles that have come out in the last 10 years have been questionable, we'll put it that way. It does not mean that there haven't been some nice ones, but the ones in their back catalog not only have the nostalgia factor, not only have that built-in clientele, but I think are generally speaking time-tested and more superior than the ones that have come out recently. So I do think that when they do the repackages, when they do the returning favorites, when they do like their core collections that remain in the brick and mortar stores or on the website, there needs to be a lot of that back catalog. For the most part it is. Obviously there's a lot of things that people want to see um, because what um, Mr. Kittrich did initially was just so brilliant and so deep. I mean, it's 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 not an exhaustive catalog, but it's it's really deep. They have a deep back bench, and we want to see it. And I I think that that's that's the value of Yankee Candle right now. And frankly, they need to be exploiting it. <laughs> so there's that. Um, okay, so the Desert Blooms collection, or the Desert, I, I'm not exactly sure what it was called because one of the candles actually is Desert Blooms. Um, so the four candles were, the one that is not mentioned is like something Canyon Pine. I don't have that one. Then there was a rose, like a very deep masculine rose, and that was Desert Blooms. I know you can't see it terribly well because now I've burned through all the wax, but it was a kind of a nice soft pink, dusty pink, excuse me, color. Aloe and agave, which had kind of a pastel soft green. And then I got these in wax melts. So we had sweet vanilla horchata and it was white. And then also stargazing, which was kind of a dusky um, lavender purple. So those were the four that I bought in either wax melts or in tumblers. So how shall we begin? Um, I Let me just say that I think the most successful candle of the four here is by a wide margin, aloe and agave. Wide. Um, this is the one that I would recommend to everyone across the board. I think that it's the most palatable. I think it's the most pleasing. I think it's the most least alienating. I think it's the most mainline. And it's also just the most successful of all of them. It had extremely high strength and throw the entire way down. It was reliable. Um, it was kind of commercial in a Bath and Body Works kind of way, but it had a little bit of a twist. So let's start out with aloe and agave, which was my favorite upon smelling it cold. And it was my favorite far and away um, having it burned with a caveat that I'm going to get to about another one of these. So um, the notes on aloe agave are top notes, green, lemon, cactus water, aloe, um, mid notes, blue lotus, coriander, white peony, base notes, mineral water, musk, tea leaves, and agave. Um, and as you can tell, it got pretty sooty. Um, this candle has burned and burned and burned though. I mean, I feel as though I've burned it like 40 times. Like it took an enormous amount of effort to get through this jar. I feel like I had to burn it every day for like three weeks. It was craziness. So if you wanna get your money's worth in terms of burn time, these are good. I believe these are soy blends. I would say that there's a good amount of paraffin in these, and that would make sense from a cost standpoint, if you know what I mean. And I don't think that Yankee Candle is sparing expense uh, at this point. So I think there's a heavy amount of paraffin in it, which may also contribute to why it performs as well as it does in terms of strength and throw and fragrance consistency from top to bottom. Um, that's a that's a very paraffin kind of 
characteristic. Um, and soy is not very good at that. Soy is not good at strength and throw. And from what I can tell, soy is not particularly good in, in terms of a fragrance consistency from top to bottom. Um, you get variations of the fragrance and you certainly get variations in terms of strength and throw as you go down throughout it. Um, and there's, a, I think, a whole host of reasons why that happens. But with paraffin, you get good consistency. <laughs> like, for the most part, like Bath & Body Works consistency all the way down. And the old Yankee candles that were in the apothecary were the same way. Just, just like, like a rock <laughs> in both of the senses. Like that paraffin is like a rock in terms of its density and its hardness, but also just like a rock in terms of its reliability and predictability top to bottom. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I prefer paraffin to soy. Okay, so when I, it's beautiful. It's fresh, it's clean without being soapy. Um, it's bright and it's very aquatic. And it's all the things that you would kind of associate with a fragrance called aloe and agave. Um, obviously, neither aloe nor agave really have a deep fragrance to them, but aloe, I think for most people, kind of invokes a very watery, spa-like green, and that is exactly what is kind of being communicated here. A spa-like green with a heavy hit of, it's very sweet. It's a sweet candle. Um, so the agave, the agave is like a, a sugar substitute. It's syrupy, it's viscous. So um, agave, again, from a plant. So you've got like just a, a very aquatic, like green botanical forward kind of fragrance here without it being a real botanical. I would say that this is more of a, I, I guess you could say conceptual, although there aren't enough complex layers in it to, for it to be like a really like, intriguing conceptual <laughs> um it's aquatic it's green it's yeah it's sweet but then here's the twist and the twist is and this is what takes it to a level that makes it more than just a cliched like you know run-of-the-mill synthetic commercial bath and body works kind of watery green fragrance is that it's got the coriander in it and from the beginning i noticed it it's I don't know that you're necessarily smelling the coriander in all its fullness, but what it's providing is kind of almost a black pepper pop. Um, there's a spiciness that comes from like, um, it's a bite. It's like, it's like black pepper basically. And it's coming through and it's just, it's just kind of dirtying up the fragrance a little bit and giving it something extra. And I think that's what takes this into like, like from being decent to being quite good. Yeah, um, it's not brilliant, but this is certainly a candle that if Bath & Body Works did it, people would really like, and they would be like, oh, you've got to get it, and the strength and throw is great. And actually, Bath & Body Works needs a candle like this in their rotation right now. They don't really have a whole lot of aquatic-leaning candles, I don't think, with the exception of like Yumi and the Sea, which I haven't, I haven't done, I haven't burned it yet. I, I could be wrong about that. Like, all of their, like, Aquatic candles are tropical flowers or fruits. Um, but they don't have a whole lot of aquatic right now on the floor. They don't have a whole lot of just straight up, even in a commercial Bath & Body Works, this could also be a shower gel kind of vibe. They don't have a whole lot of this on the floor right now. And so I think this is, I think it's great. Like I said, it would definitely pass muster at Bath & Body Works. And I think a lot of you would be very satisfied with this candle. So even if you're not like a usual Bath and, um, Yankee candle buyer right now, especially if you're coming from the Bath and Body Works fold, you, you would not do wrong with this candle. Um, it does come in the three wick too, which is Bath and Body Works style. You're gonna get through it a whole lot quicker. I haven't tried it because it wasn't on the floor yet, a Yankee candle, but it is now. Um, so I really recommend aloe and agave. And I'm almost a little bit mortified about this. Hold please, I'm just gonna run and get something. This, guys, I just reviewed this or I just hauled it from Kringle. This is Greenleaf 
This is Greenleaf. Remember I told you that it was, in my opinion, the most main line of those Green Reserve botanicals that Kringle has just put out. And I was smelling this last night. I came in from walking, popped the lid, you know, because they're sitting there and I'm like, oh, let me just smell my candles. <laughs> so I popped the lid and I thought to myself, this almost reminds me of aloe and agave. And I had not made that connection when I initially hauled it. And I'm kind of mortified that I didn't because friends, these are very similar, very similar. They are not dupes for each other, um, but I would say that if you like this one, you would definitely like this one and vice versa. Um, and then this morning when I started comparing the notes, I'm like, and that's why. <laughs> so the notes for the Kringle Green Leaf are green herbal bergamot, tea, citrus, verbena, wood, green tea, and musk. And the aloe one has tea leaves, agave, musk, mineral water, lotus, peony, cactus water, aloe, green, lemon for the bergamot. I mean, like almost note to note, with the exception of the coriander, they're extremely similar. So I, yeah, very similar. And I, I actually think that the, the, the branding of aloe and agave makes more sense. So I have to kind of give props to Yankee Candle. This smells like aloe and agave, and guess what? This smells like aloe and agave too. <laughs> There's actually not quite enough like plant or vine elements in here for the green leaf to be a better like branding on it. Um, I do think that the Yankee Candle one has the coriander note, which is really special, that is not present here, but I will say that this one smells more full and more premium than the Yankee Candle one does. So the Yankee Candle one does go a little bit commercial, a little bit Bath and Body Works. It has a little bit more of a cheapness to it and a thinness. Um, Whereas this one is, it's more expensive smelling. It's also, I have a feeling it's not going to have the same strength and throw. Um, and it does have a little bit more dynamism in it. So in lieu of the coriander, it just, yeah. If I encountered them both in the store, I would like both of them. I would probably get this one. Um, but at any rate... I just wanted to call that out and like I said, I'm kind of embarrassed that I didn't make that connection when I initially opened the box and smelled it. Um, but they are very, very similar. I, I feel badly about this because I know that I threw shade or at least called out Kringle for um, duping other candles, duping other companies. And here's another example where it looks like there's a very strong family resemblance. But I have to give a pass to Kringle because I, I can't imagine that they developed this candle with this one in mind. They both basically came out at the same time. So maybe it's just a big coincidence. But I mean, I don't know anything about that. Those of you who are like initiated into like the candle developing world, do they... Like, how much do they know about what the other team is developing? Or, I don't know. I, I, I'm going to, I'm generously, with Christian charity, I am going to assume that Kringle had no idea about that and just independently developed it at the same time. But very similar, and I would say probably very successful candles, both of them. Um... Just super pleasing, super pleasing. Okay, um, this one is not one I would repurchase. This is Desert Blooms. Um, so Desert Blooms is basically, and I said this, it's kind of a very masculine, um, like rosewood patchouli from Bath and Body Works kind of vibe. So the notes on this one are, top notes, sparkling bergamot. Yeah, perfume right off. Um, cypress, saguaro, cactus, mid notes, rose petals, vetiver, dried sage, base notes, driftwood, musk, and aldehydes. 
It's actually kind of nice. And I said, when I hauled it, um, I would buy this over the rosewood patchouli. The rosewood patchouli for me from Bath and Body Works is just so heavy. It's so heavy, like I'm, and I'm not even a rose person, but like I do lean masculine and I just can't bring myself to buy that candle. Whereas this one I did because I did think that it was a little bit lighter and brighter and not quite as heavy. And I do think that is the case upon burning it. It is lighter and brighter. It's also cheaper though than I would imagine what the rosewood patchouli is. Um, I The strength and throw in this one was not as good. I think it was probably, by the way, this one was probably in the like seven and a half to eight range. Like it was, it was good. It was really good. Um, given the aquatic nature of it and therefore a little bit of thinness, it might not do as well in an open concept. I kept it in the back for the most part. I don't know that it would compete well with other things either. Um, so I would say it would probably do better in an enclosed space where it doesn't have to compete with other fragrances. This one was really more like, when it was burning high, I would say it was in the six or 6.5 range. Um, and it got a little overwhelming at 6.5. So it's kind of like the worst of both worlds where it's like, ah, uh, I, I don't I don't like it when it gets high, but I'm also like mad that it's not high, if that makes sense. Um, I did notice too that the fragrance, and this had to do, it felt a little cheap to me. The fragrance seemed to split a little bit so that at a distance, I got a very strong, like just sweet powdery kind of cliched note that went a little baby powder for me, an antique. And then, which was not pleasant. And then as I got closer to the candle itself, I could smell more of the depth of, especially like the, the more masculine elements and the, and the nicer rose. So I didn't love the way that it, it just, it, it didn't land quite as well as I would like it to. So I would not repurchase it, but I don't know that it's my wheelhouse to begin with. So there's that too. Um, and if you like these kinds of things, you might tolerate those kinds of things a lot better than I did. But you know, when you start out with like two strikes, like you really can't have a third. So I personally wouldn't get Desert Blooms again, but I think it fits well and it adds something that is not only appropriate to this collection, but also appropriate to the season. Um, and I want to give high marks to Yankee Candle across the board, not only for the restraint of the four candles, but actually, at least conceptually, all of these candles work in terms of the concept, the overarching collection, and the season, and they are all four completely different from each other. We don't have candles that are similar, and so in that sense, they've given us a great diversity and a great range. We've got a powdery, heavy masculine floral. We've got like an aquatic, light, sweet with a little bit of an herbal pop. We have a lavender um, and we have what is supposed to be a gourmand, which is not, but is in fact different from all of them. So I, I give very, I still think it's a strong collection, even if it didn't land or execute flawlessly, if that makes sense. Um, all right. Then we're going to go to Stargazing and Vanilla Orchata. Gosh, I'm running out of time. Um, I have to like go to my next thing. Um, I am actually going to pause this video and come back to you. Is that okay with you? <laughs> I'm going to pause because I have to run to another commitment and then I will finish this video in like two hours with different clothes and a different mentality because I really do want to kind of take my time with stargazing and with sweet vanilla orchata and wrap it up with some comments. And I'm just not going to rush through it here in five minutes. It's not going to happen. Pause. I'll get right back to you. Okay. I'm back. <laughs> Gosh, what a day. All right. So I ran off to teach a workout class. Oh, here's my speaker. Hold on. Um, I ran off to teach a class, teach a workout class at the local gym. Um, 
so I had to do that really quick. Um, and now I have to go to my other job. It's just one of those days, you know? And I knew everything. If I had gotten up earlier, I could have recorded the entire thing. But I just, man, waking up in the morning is just, oh, one of the worst things to ever befall me as a person. And I can't stand it. Okay, um, so let's, my coffee is cold, but I'm, I'm still digging it. Stargazing and sweet vanilla horchata. Okay, so I wasn't sure about these when I smelled them in the store at Target. Um, and when I first hauled from Target, they actually didn't have the horchata, which was fine with me, because I saw that it was a gourmand, and I was like, yeah, I'm out. <laughs> it's definitely not a candle for me, so I didn't miss it. Um, I did smell stargazing, and I didn't like it at Target. I thought it was real weird but I was having a hard time smelling it in the store and I couldn't figure out exactly what I was smelling, to be honest. So then later, um, I was at Target again and Sweet Vanilla Orchata was there and I pulled the lid just bracing myself and being like, oh, here we go, here we go, right? So if you're, if you're not familiar, vanilla, so Orchata is a, like a Latin drink and it is, I believe, made of rice milk, but it has a very sweetened, condensed milk kind of vibe to it. And it has the usual Mexican-ish spices. So very heavy on like cinnamon, for instance, with some others to kind of round it out. Um, I encountered it in Tucson, Arizona when I was there last summer and fell in love. Oh my gosh, I needed horchata every day, especially when it was poured into coffee, like stop. It was just so amazing and so refreshing. So um, I love the beverage, but I'm not a gourmand person and I don't need a candle that smells like that. Anyway, so I lifted the lid and I was like, wait, what? <laughs> this is amazing, number one. And number two, not at all what I was expecting. And it's not what anybody is expecting because sweet vanilla horchata is very mismarketed. And it's not the first time that Yankee Candle has done this in the recent past. They have put forward several gourmands over the last few years that are supposed to be gourmands and are in fact perfumes and often quite floral perfumes. Like they don't have anything to do with anything remotely gourmand, which obviously makes the gourmand folks angry and doesn't, it's just, it's a, it's a marketing misstep in that the people who actually would like that candle may not, a la, like myself, would not even like pick it up or, or try it. And so it's just, it's, it's not a good move. Um, that happened by the way with the candle that I really like, the spun vanilla sugar from the holiday season, not this year, but the last year, again, was supposed to be like a confectionery and it was like a laundry day scent. Like it was craziness. I, I, and I, I don't know what all the reasons are for that. I don't know if it's laziness. I don't know if it's incompetence. I don't know if it's, as I've said before, the right hand not knowing what the left is doing, the marketing team being like completely disconnected from what's actually happening in development. Like I have no idea but um, it's generally speaking, not a good move. You can get away with it once or twice. Bath & Body Works does it once or twice. But for the most part, they'll, they'll consistently advertise that something is a gourmand and it will in fact be a gourmand, you know? Okay, so sweet vanilla horchata. The notes on this one are top notes, rice milk, orange peel, and sweet yuzu. Um, I could be wrong, but I don't think there's a whole lot of citrus in a traditional horchata, but at least it's all gourmand. Here's where we run into problems. Mid notes, soft rose, velvet jasmine, and stone fruit. Again, stone fruit has nothing to do with horchata, but at least it's a fruit. Rose and jasmine, what are they doing in an horchata beverage? Um, base notes, sandalwood, amber, cardamom, and vanilla. The vanilla should be there. Sandalwood, amber, and cardamom is a no. Cardamom is a spice, but it's the wrong spice. And if you've got um, sharp eyes, do you see that cinnamon stick icon right there? 
It's because cinnamon is associated with horchata. Why is there not cinnamon in this, in this candle? And why card, I mean, cardamom is more like India. That's an Indian kind of beverage rather than, so they just really have that crossed. But obviously the biggest issue here is the string of florals in a candle that should not even remotely be floral. And then you've got sandalwood and amber indicating that it's kind of perfumey. And guess what? It is. <laughs> so um, I use these. Here, here's what the disc looks like once I put it in my warmer. I actually did two of them. So I did like three and three. Um, they fit real nicely. Like three of them fit in the bottom of my like warmer. It's a bottom up burnt warmer that I got from Target, I think. And I may link it down below. Um, warmers are actually pretty easy to get everywhere. Candle crocks, far less so. Um, and top-down warmers, less so as well. But the bottom ones, you should have no problem finding. Um, so, <laughs> here's the thing. I kind of like this. And it has a lot of execution problems, even when we get past the marketing misstep and the weirdness of this fragrance. It's not executed particularly well. It has a cheapness to it. It, I think, doesn't coalesce quite the way that it should. But what I love about this fragrance is that it is original and way out of the box. And it has potential, it has ambition, it has, like, I, I wanna see them go back to the drawing board with this. Even though I do think that like aloe and agave is the most successful candle, it's also not like gonna blow your mind. It's a candle that Bath and Body Works would like. It's, it's not, have, have you and will you continue to smell versions of this no matter how good it is? Yes. This <laughs> is cray cray, cray cray. And I'm kind of here for it. <laughs> It's for the, the reason that I enjoy Kringle or like old school Kringle back in the day. Like I kind of like to encounter, to be confronted by something that's just like, wait, what are you doing here? <laughs> and does that almost work? Gosh, that's unique. So it's a, it is a sweet candle. It's a sweet candle, but man, there's a lot in it that is cutting that sweetness. And it is the sandalwood and the amber and the cardamom. Friends, there is a ton of cardamom in here. And at first I wasn't even sure exactly what I was smelling, but then one of those times I was burning it, like melting it in the bathroom and I had my nose like right in it. And I was like, oh, there's this really weird off-putting like sharp note in here and what is it and I like buried my nose in it and I'm like it's almost like it's and the minute that the word cardamom came to mind I was like there is cardamom in it that is the spice that's in it it is cardamom this is a candle like that cardamom note comes forward sometimes with both Yankee and with um, Kringle, they'll have this enormous scent list and like well over half of the notes listed are not coming forward with any kind of singularity to allow you to smell them, right? <laughs> this is one where, oh yeah. In fact, I would say that the cardamom is one of the most obvious and strongest components of this candle. I would say it's a very like marshmallow vanilla with a cardamom and then with the amber and the floral adding a perfume component to marry them. Okay, so it is perfumey, but it's also sweet and vanilla. The sweet and the vanilla and the cardamom actually could be a gourmand moment of some kind. It's not exactly a cinnamon roll, but it's still gourmand. But then the perfume floral in between is taking it into a conceptual place. This is a conceptual candle. And it's not a concept of vanilla horchata. Let's just put that out there right there. What would the concept be? The 
the concept is Morocco. The concept is exotic, exotic Middle Eastern desert or like North African or Indian, like any of those cultures, like this, this would invoke any of those. And they're all like fairly hot weather like countries. So again, it fits well in the desert motif. It's just completely mismarketed. That's it. This is a very, it's a heady, exotic kind of candle. And frankly, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Now, here's the thing, caveats. There is a cheapness to the fragrance. As with the um, Desert Blooms, it tends to separate. The, the fragrance separates, which is, that it's part of it not coalescing quite the right way, um, but it also, to me, smells a little like a cheapness in the oils. Um, so the vanilla component kind of separates away from the cardamom and the floral, almost like a, a mixture that just kind of like pulls apart, as it were, yeah? Um, like when it's melted, it becomes like oily and like, you know, when you have oil and water, like it just kind of, yeah. Um, and that's not great. And I think especially the closer you get, um, um, the, the, the more cheap it smells, to be honest. Um, but when it's all together like this and it's not melted and it's not burned, it smells great. <laughs> It smells great. It, tell, it smells, if not premium, it smells um, thoughtful and unique. And like a lot of care and thought went into this fragrance, frankly. Will it be for everyone? Absolutely not. Will it be for the gourmand folks who wanted a sweet vanilla horchata? 1,000% not. I like this candle. I do. And I'm sure it's not coming back because why would it? <laughs> I mean, nobody likes it, I guess. I like it. And secretly, or maybe not so secretly, of the four of these, this is the one I would repurchase. And I know that all things being equal, the aloe and the agave is actually more successful. Um, the strength and throw on this one was not good. Not, 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 not good. I would say, but I, actually the wax melts didn't do well across the board. So I don't know about the quality of Yankee Candle's wax melts. Um, neither one of them did particularly well, but the stargazing did better for sure than this one did. <laughs> there were a few times I melted this early on where I was like, is this unscented? <laughs> I'm not getting anything. Like I had to be like... <laughs> Where is the fragrance? You know, like sitting right on top of it. Um, but then there were other melts where I did get something from it. Um, but I would say it was kind of coming in in like the five range, if that, kind of like a four to five. And obviously I'm like, um, I'm uh, figuring for like a wax melt as opposed to a candle, even a three wick or a two wick or whatever. I'm judging it on the, on the continuum of a wax melt. For me, it was kind of in the four range and from reports from others who reviewed it they kind of got the same thing in in either the two wick or the three wick it was a pretty shy um strength and throw that said with the profile of it being heavy and exotic and perfumey you can get away with a lighter strength and throw because it gets more than that and it can get very overwhelming and stifling. And frankly, this is one of those fragrances that could stifle. Um, so I would be careful about this one. It, it does need to be a little bit reformulated. I'm not gonna lie and tell you that it's executed perfectly because it's not. Um, it does need to go back to the drawing board but of all four of them, this was the most ambitious and the most creative and the most original. And so I'm kind of here for it. It's not perfect. And it's not gonna be for a lot of people and it needs work. 
but I am on a certain level the most impressed with this one of all four. And yes, if I'm at Richmond sometime, maybe in the summer, I would be super interested in getting the three wick of this and just seeing how it does. I wouldn't mess around with any of the two wicks, but I would get it in the three wick um, with the best chance of having strength and throw and just kind of smell it again. There is almost something like Coca-Cola-like about this fragrance too, which is like kind of ironic because it kind of like goes in that beverage direction. And it's because sodas like Dr. Pepper, like Coca-Cola, you know, various different ones, root beer, they all kind of have a, um, we, don't, we don't often think about what goes into those beverages, but it is a very um, almost like clove heavy brown sugar kind of like concoction. Um, so the spices and sometimes exotic spices go into those like very processed beverages. We just don't think of them in terms of their like more essential ingredients. Um, and so sometimes candles with some of those notes will come across in a very like soda pop kind of way. This almost has a soda pop. It's the cardamom up against the vanilla marshmallow. Um, I think it's those two elements that kind of go in that direction a little bit. So there, there could be that frame of reference too, but it's obviously more expensive smelling than a soda pop and the perfume floral in between kind of like undermines that vibe. Um, so yeah, I, I, this is not gonna be a majority report. It's a minority report, but I like this candle and I would repurchase it. Of all four of them, I would repurchase it. I like aloe and agave, but now I've got this one too that's very similar. Um, and it's definitely the most commercial. I could get that candle again um, in a, a million different varieties. Probably, you know, a Bath and Body Works candle. For me, it's a little too commercial. It's not quite as intriguing as I, nor as green or as authentic as I would like in a candle that I would repurchase. Um, although I think a lot of people are going to love it and it's a very good candle in that respect. Um, for me personally, and just for my preferences, what I like in candles, vanilla horchata is the winner for me, but by no means perfect and not even executed as well as some of these other ones. Quickly stargazing, here's stargazing which was very popular and I think quite successful. Stargazing is top notes lilac, mineral air, eucalyptus, mid notes lavender, geranium, and violet, base notes vanilla, sugar, rose petals, and sandalwood. So once again, we have a very strong um, perfume floral with, no? Well, sandalwood, I guess we don't have amber. We have sandalwood up against rose, geranium, violet, lavender, lilac, and eucalyptus. And then you have vanilla sugar for sweetness and mineral air for, I don't know. I don't like this one, but I, I don't think it's a bad candle and I, I, I can't say that it's unpleasant. There's something in it that I just don't like. The predominant note is definitely lavender, and actually, now that I'm seeing the list, I think lilac is the next one. There is something green, almost vegetal, and I think it's um, lilac. So I would say that the biggest notes here are the lilac, lavender, and then the geranium and the violet. I think all of them are producing this kind of like, and then with the mineral air, a very like vegetal, mineral kind of um, floral herbal. Yeah, something like that. I just don't like it. And I think it's because actually geranium is real funky. I think that it's, eucalyptus and lavender are also very aggressive and can go medicinal. So you've got lavender and eucalyptus that can go medicinal or aroma. They're sharp, right? And then you've got geranium, which is funky and can be medicinal too. And you're adding that. And the lilac will soften it down, all of them, which is welcome. And then the violet, I think, is adding kind of a mineral, like vegetal element too. And for me, I just think it's too many of those. So for me, it's, it's kind of a cacophony of some things that I think, 
don't know. It's just, it's a little bit too, it's a little too aromatherapy medicinal for me, I think. And there is a strong attempt with the lap, with the lilac and the rose and the vanilla sugar to kind of like make it all work. And honestly, almost everybody loves it. So I think it is successful and I think it does work for everybody but me, basically. Um, I just didn't like it. I didn't like it when I first smelled it. I didn't like it any of the times that I smelled it. I burned, obviously, two batches of these in the warmers. I didn't like it then. I didn't like hate it either. I just didn't like it. I was, I was gonna melt it last night. <laughs> Um, it's like my bed, my bedtime candle, basically. So I go for a big walk, usually at night, because I like to night walk. Um, and I usually put a candle on in the warmer, because I don't like to leave candles burning in my house, obviously. But at the same time, I like candles when I come in, when I take a shower, when I, like, you know, retire in bed or whatever else. So I have found that it's nice to either warm a candle top down as I walk and then when I come in, I can light it and it's already pulled really nicely. Or I put the um, melter, the bottom melter on in the bathroom. Um, so I was walking out last night and I'm like, I definitely have enough fragrance in here. Should I just do stargazing again? And then I just told myself, you don't like it. You've burned it enough. You have a good sense of it. Move on go to another candle, and I did. So that's kind of how I feel about it. That said, the performance on it was better than Vanilla Orchata, and I didn't even try it in the candles. From all reports, this candle performs quite well. I don't know if it's quite as strong as the Aloe and Agave. My sense was that for most people, it was coming in in the seven to 7.5 range, so a little shyer than that, but certainly within the realm of decent. Um, and most people really, really liked it. So, and you may be one of them. So please let this not dissuade you. I'm just saying like for my own personal preferences, I didn't love it. But I've said many times before, lavender is not my note. I, I generally don't love lavender candles with the exception of a few from Bath & Body Works that I think are fantastic because I, I really love a specific lavender note that Bath & Body Works uses. Not exclusively, they have other lavender notes that I don't like, but they do have one lavender note that is really gorgeous and like I just wanna drink in, but I would say that's the exception generally. I don't know that I appreciate lavender the way that most people do. So that was um, stargazing, but I do think for most people, stargazing and aloe and agave were the most successful. Um, they were executed, I think, the most well-rounded, and they both had very good strength and throw. In the case of aloe and agave, very strong strength and throw. So I think that those two are the most mainline and the most successful. But I even think Desert Blooms was successful enough, and I personally have a fondness for Vanilla Orchata for all the reasons mentioned. Um, and it is definitely avant-garde, so not for everybody, but I, I really think that that one actually has the most potential and originality to it, even though it needs a lot of work. Um, so all told, I'll reiterate what I said at the beginning, I, I'm, I'm happy with this mini collection from Yankee Candle. It's kind of like when you watch somebody do gymnastics, like it's it's like watching Yankee Candle like go up on those bars and do a flippy flippy thing and then Yankee Candle comes down and I can't say that they landed it, they didn't stick the landing, you know? Like both feet on the ground, arms open. It was kind of like a, a wobble, a one foot, a touch, you know, you're kind of like, ah. I, so it, it didn't like stick, but it was decent. It was decent and they righted themselves. And frankly, I've seen a whole lot of candles from Kringle in the same period of time that did not land as well at all, <laughs> that didn't have strength and throw, that were redundant. So many redundant candles from Kringle already in January and February. These were not re redundant. They made sense in this collection. They made sense for the season. They, they gave good range. None of them were like each other. Each one of them gave something completely different, but still within the concept. I, I think it's good. Does it blow my mind? No. Does this make them, does this put them in the vanguard of candle developers? Absolutely not. 
Um, and maybe I'm giving too much credit to them because frankly the bar is so low for Yankee Candle at this point that it's like, yay, you did some decent candles. <laughs> maybe for another candle company this would be like, it's the bare minimum, right? I don't know, maybe I've lost some objectivity. Um, there were definitely moments shortly after I purchased and started burning these that I was like, oh fuck, this is so bad. I have to say, even with like this one, because this I didn't burn this one until later. So I think the first one that I burned because I wanted to so bad was Vanilla Orchata. And it was so bad in terms of strength and throw and so odd that I wasn't sure about it. And then when I started burning this one, I was like, oh no, it's like, it's cheap, it's this, it's that. And I started getting so sad in my heart, you know? Then of course, aloe and agave turned it around and I really started to like, get into the vanilla orchata in a certain way. So like, it turned around, but early on, I was like, oh my gosh. Yankee Candle, like what the fuck is going on? And it made me so sad in my heart. And you know what happens when, when that happens? I go to eBay and I just start buying like in like upset rage, all the black bands that I can find on the market. I guess I get like in that headspace where I'm like, old Yankee Candle is going away, it will never come back. I need to have them all, I need to buy them all, I need to keep them in my closet, I need to remember. Like, you know, it just, I go in that headspace. So actually I did buy, this was in one of those periods, I bought this Coconut Bay, which is not a black band, but I bought a Coconut Bay off of, um, it's actually used, but that's okay. And it's a little basic. I can't remember what the notes are on this, but I'm gonna try it. It's no, worse than any of the Kringle um, tropical ones. And then this one broke in transit. Mm, look, Country Heather. But I took the wax out. Here's the wax, yeah. It's like a beautiful lilac, but it's just a little bit softer and lower range and less like um, aggressive and like, like, I don't know, hysterical. Like lilacs can be hysterical sometimes. They're like, we're a lilac, you know? This is a nice, like soft mid-range to deeper range lilac, and I'm loving it. This was to keep forever because obviously I need to like preserve the tradition in my closet. But since this one broke and they ended up just giving it to me for free, it will obviously have to be a burn one. So I'll probably burn that in another vessel. This is what happens though when I like, because it just, the tradition of Yankee Candle is just so important to me. And when I see the Yankee Candle of new, like fucking it up, it makes me so irate and sad and like nostalgic and just like indignant, indignant in a righteous way, you know? Um, so I, I kind of feel bad for the new Yankee Candle because in many ways, I'm, I'm so much harder on them. And if they make any misstep wrong, like I'm gonna completely freak out, you know? Um, so, so in that sense, like, I'm kind of sympathetic to them and it's like, okay. Like, I, they did okay, they did good here. They did good, Let, let's give them a moment. It's gonna be fine, you know? Um, I haven't talked about the, the marketing here. I have thrown shade before. I wanted to give another shady moment. Um, I'm not gonna do that. This is what I call a clip art design. And it looks like um, two nine-year-olds um, put clip art all over the jar. It looks like two nine-year-olds who are children of employees at Yankee Candle, um, just home from school, you know, and their parents don't know what to do with them. So a day at work, they're just in their dad's office, both of them sitting on the same computer chair. I mean, I could just see it, you know? Bobby and Sally, you know? And, and they've just been tasked, just go ahead and create this jar, you know? And then Sally turns to Bobby and goes, what if we put it all over? Like, not just on the front, but all over. And Bobby's like, yeah. <laughs> and then that's what they do. They just put the clip art all over the jar. I mean, it looks like something I could do, right? I mean, some of it's even like 
black and white clip art, right? <laughs> they call it a day. I mean, they've got to be saving money on like design work. I, I, I don't know what to say. I do love the colored wax. I love the colored wax. And I know there's people that like this. So I apologize. I don't mean to offend, but like, this is a no. I mean, this looks so cheap. It just looks so cheap and just so thoughtless. Let's just, just put the clip art all over it. And then, oh my God, I just, I can't even begin. They're probably saving money on childcare for Bobby and Sally too. So, you know, God bless that childcare is expensive, but, um, yeah, there's a lot of room for improvement for Yankee Candle. Like, I'm not going to lie to you. Um, and it worries me because many of these candles are coming off as cheap. They're coming off a little bit like... It's just on the end, and I think it's in the scent oils used. They're, I don't think they're premium. They're, they're, they're cutting costs on that, and they can't cut costs on that. can't. I can ignore cutting costs on the marketing. I can but like you can't cut costs on fragrance oils. These are coming across a little bit like, this is a Walmart candle, this is a CVS candle. I mean, it's even some Aldi candles smell more premium than, than it, it, it's not about like the, the fragrance notes, it's about the scent oils. There's just something cheap about the way that some of these smell. Um, so I would say that that's the number one ground, room for improvement and it, they, they can't, they cannot, cut corners on that. They can't. They can't. Um, they shouldn't cut corners on a lot of these other things too, um, but they are problems for the future. <laughs> I don't want them spending so much time on the packaging and ignoring the things, the one important thing, which is the fragrance and the way that it comes across. And I am happy to say that Aloe and Agave came across great. Evening River Walk was pretty good as well. Um, and I like the ambition, even if it was just, even if it was just a mistake of like, even if it was just an accident of like chaos. It, it, it makes me smile and it intrigues me. So I'm happy about that. All right, my friends, that's what I've got to, with you about Yankee Candle. Um, I, I, I have to say it's mostly positive. Although obviously I still have question marks and reservations about where this company is going and where their heads are at. Um, but I think very wise of them to show restraint in their offerings and to make sure that they got them as right as they could. So yeah, that's that. I hope that was helpful. Um, I am gonna do a video very soon, which is a what did I burn in February? So watch for that soon. And obviously these will feature prominently and we won't have to talk about them very long because we talked about them now. Let me know what you thought about those Yankee candles if you picked them up. And if you didn't, um, and especially if you're a Bath and Body Works person, I would think about aloe and agave. I will catch you guys in the next one.